The very first domestic overlocker was invented by Baby Lock back in the early 1960s, which means that by now Baby Lock have pretty much got the recipe right. Um, they are worldwide known as the best quality on the market, um, but of course that comes with a price. So Baby Lock UK were looking for a range of machines that could be sold alongside the baby locks that had a good quality to them but were of a cheaper construction so they could be sold with the baby locks but weren't quite as expensive and that's how the success range was born so what we have here is the success lucy she is a four thread overlock Unlike the Baby Locks, she is not really an automatic tension machine, she is a preset tension machine. The Baby Locks have a sensor under the presser foot which detects the thickness of the fabric, whereas this Lucy has a stitch selector on the side and when you select the stitch that you're working on, it presets those tensions um, as if you, you were using a light to medium weight fabric and a 40 weight thread so it gives you a basic tension for those okay. those fabrics and you can override the tensions using the levers on the front should it be necessary quite frankly I found that this machine is pretty reliable and it doesn't need a great deal of tweaking now as far as the controls are concerned we have the foot lift is on the side here um, it takes a while to get used to that but I found that now I'm quite accustomed to going for the foot lift on the side my stitch selector is here so basically um, whatever the stitch I have selected it sets up those tensions for me um, because I find it hard sometimes to remember them all I have written them onto a tag which I keep on the back of my machine that means I don't have to keep referring to the manual every time I want to change the stitch next one down is my stitch length that we adjust in the normal way as if it were a sewing machine so the finer the fabric the shorter your stitch length the bottom one is the differential feed. Now the differential feed is your greatest ally on these machines as opposed to a sewing machine. Basically because what that does is it adjusts the speed of the front feed dog. So if I raise the foot and remove it here, like so. Oh, take that off. It comes with a trim bin. I open this so you can see what I'm doing. Basically we have two sets of feed dogs on this machine. The ones at the back always go at the same speed. My differential feed adjusts the speed of the ones at the front. Therefore, if I found that my fabric is stretchy and it is squishing as it goes under the foot and stretching, I can alter the differential feed in order to stop that squish effect. So I can slow down the front feed dogs in comparison to the back ones and that will stop it being stretched as it goes through. In addition, if I want to gather my fabric, I can set my differential feed to two and my stitch length to maximum, which on this machine I think is four millimeters and that will actually set this feed dog to go twice as fast as the back one and therefore it's gathering. I can also do a lettuce edge using the differential feed so I can set it to stretch the fabric as it goes through usually with a rolled hem and that means that it gets severely stretched and you can then do that lovely lettuce edge which we often see on stretch fabrics and so on. Um, on the far side here, oops, just close that, thank you, on the far side here I have, and I have to say this very very slowly and carefully, the presser foot pressure, that's one of those phrases I struggle to say sometimes, 
Um, that allows me, if I'm working on a really thick fabric, that allows me to take the pressure off of the foot so it will give the thicker fabrics more space to go through underneath. I only ever adjust that when I'm using something like a thick fleece. Um, and the other advantage on here is that it is calibrated. So it means that I can reset it to the same setting. If I've gone back to use the same fabric a few weeks later, I can reset that. The other one here is my stitch width dial. Now again, this is calibrated on a lot of the cheaper machines. You find there's no calibration on there. So you have to pretty much wing it when you come to, to guess how wide the stitch is. But fortunately on here, because it is calibrated, once again, if I'm going back to using the same fabric a week or so later, I can reset it to the same settings. There are quite a few optional extra feet that you can get for this machine. So if you're not using the basic one, uh, we have this one. This is the tape guide. Now the tape guide has a, a screw on the front here and you can adjust that in order to keep tape or elastic or ribbon exactly in place. I use it quite a lot for stitching lace on and so on. Um, the next one here is the elastic foot. Now the elastic foot allows you to put elastic through the rollers on it. There's a screw on the top here. You can tighten that screw and basically the tighter that screw goes the tighter your underwear becomes. Here is the blind hem foot. Now that has a really sturdy guide along the side here. So um, when you're doing a blind hem, which you can do on this machine as a two thread flat lock, um, the blind hem is very useful for hemming the bottom of t-shirts because it has a very, very stretchy stitch to it. I also will use this foot for um, things like flat lock where I want to not trim the edge of the fabric um, and I want to keep it nice and straight. It is a very useful guide. The next one here is my piping foot. Now the piping foot looks quite normal on the top but when you turn it over it has a channel underneath it. Now that channel is for your piping, so you can put piping cord inside a strip of bias fabric and then um, stitch it down to make it a lovely neat bias strip to go into your cushions and garments and so on. I also use this foot to put zips into my garments. Um, Nothing too complicated, it needs to be a fairly straight zip, but it works beautifully. This one, this is my gathering foot. Now the gathering foot has a blade underneath and your frill goes under the blade. We use the differential feed to gather that frill, but the main part of your garment, uh, the main fabric goes through the foot. So you can then gather the frill onto the garment all in one go. Works beautifully on lace as well as fabrics. And then the last one in the collection is the beading foot. Now the beading foot has a channel, has a hole through there and a hole underneath so that you slide your beaded, your string of beads through there or it also works beautifully for sequins and so on. All of those are optional extras, but they really do add another dimension to the potential of this little machine. One thing that a lot of people miss when they first open up their overlockers is the fact that the tension mast has little holes in each segment and you need to twist the mast in order for the clip to clip into 
that segment. That way, once you start stitching, the vibration of the machine is not going to make that mast start sliding down as you go. Now, all overlockers need to be threaded upper looper first. That's the third one from the left. The reason being, the upper looper is the one at the back. If you try and thread the lower looper first, you will find that it is far more difficult to thread the upper looper and it is also far more likely that you will cross those two threads over. If you do that accidentally, the machine will stitch a couple of inches, then those two threads will pull tight and one of them will break. It is usually the lower looper. So we're going to thread the upper looper first. Um, it's perfectly okay to turn the balance wheel on the side until you've got good access to that looper. So now I'm going to collect the thread. Make sure that your thread is good and tough. Give it a tug, make sure that it's strong. It is a total and utter waste of time to use fragile thread on these machines because you can guarantee they will catch you out. Now I just have to click the thread into a little clip at the back there. My foot is up. That is imperative when you are threading an overlocker that the foot must be up because that then opens those tension discs and it means that the thread can get between them. Once I've got it down that first channel I then give it a tug top and bottom to make absolutely certain that the thread is between the tension discs. Tweezers. I never thread without a pair of tweezers and it is highly important that you get a really good set and those tweezers need to meet from tip to elbow. If they don't meet from tip to elbow then I strongly suggest you take a pair of pliers and squeeze them until they do because that way you can take hold of that thread and pull. If they only meet from the tip that's absolutely fine if you happen to be a surgeon but when you're trying to thread an overlocker I find it is much more use if they meet right the way along that piece. Now I'm going to hold the thread with my tweezers in one hand and position it with my fingers in the other. So just poking it into place like so. That's it. Now there's one more up here. And now we have to thread the eye of the looper. So I take my snips and I cut the thread at an angle. You will then find it is much easier to thread that looper eye like so. Then the thread needs to go to the back of the machine and under the foot. And now the most difficult one. This will vary slightly from machine to machine, but I do find if you're looking for a new machine, it's always a darn good idea to find one that actually has a lower looper threader. I'll show you that in just a moment. So into the clip here. Make sure it's in and seated properly. Now again, I'm following the red dots this time, so I'm just going to turn the balance wheel so I've got better access and then take my tweezers, clip into that one and that one. This machine, the two threads go in the same clips for the first two occasions. Now on this machine I have a very useful thing here which is the lower looper threader. Can you see it moving there? Because the lower looper, which is this beastie, has to be threaded at the business end and at the opposite end. Some of the cheaper machines you have to open up this side you have to thread that end, then you have to poke the thread back through and thread this end. This one is considerably easier because all I have to do now is make sure that the eye of the looper 
is threaded. Again, I'm just going to turn it slightly so I've got access. There we go. Now, hold that, preferably without wrapping it around the other pieces. And tuck it into that looper threader. Now I push that and there it is done. So much easier than many other machines out there. So that's my two looper thread loopers threaded and now for the needles. And you'll notice that actually I've got three threads the same colour and the left needle thread is actually the only one that has to match my fabric because that is the only one that will show from the right side of the machine. So again, just take the thread in my tweezers, cut it at an angle. So it helps tremendously if you stick your tongue out while you're doing it. So that's the first one threaded. First one nearly pulled out again. Take it to the back and under the foot and now left needle same root and because it's that same root that's why if you take one needle out it's always advisable to take the thread out as well because as they both go down the same channel you're liable to get one dragged along with the other me with me a bit that one. Now when you're done trim all the threads to the width of the table. If you cut those too short because the needle threads go down and wrap themselves around the lower looper if those threads are too short the needles will unthread themselves almost instantly. And now we're ready to stitch. So I've set the machine up for a four thread overlock. So my stitch selector is on A, my stitch length and differential feed are both on N, as is my stitch width and also the presser foot pressure. Everything is set on N. So we're about to see what the basic settings are. Let me just turn that and make sure that it's all level here. Um, I've got a fairly lightweight piece of cotton here, so we'll see how that plays out. There is a pretty perfect stitch. If I was to be very picky, I might tighten the needle thread. To check the needle thread tension, you open the fabric out like so. I can see a little bit of those threads, so I would tighten both needle threads very slightly to eliminate that. So you check the needle threads from the right side of the fabric then you check the looper threads from the wrong side of the fabric. Can you see how it's just slightly puckering there? So in that case, I would slightly loosen the looper tensions. So let's do another piece and see what that looks like. Always make sure that you trim off a little bit of the th of the fabric. Um, you've gone to the trouble of setting all the tensions up for that fabric. If you then don't cut some of the fabric off, you're relying totally on your own steering. Now you see how 
We've eliminated the puckering on the edge and it's much closer from the right side. This time I'm going to reset the tension, so to do that I just turn it to B and then back again to A. Everything else stays the same. This time I'm going to try those same built-in settings with some sweatshirt fabric. You'll notice when I start stitching, and this is particularly important if you're learning to use an overlocker, Rather than keep lifting and lowering the foot, just raise the toe using your thumb. That way you don't run the risk of stitching with the foot up because most of these machines will actually stitch with the foot up and if you try that you'll find that all the stitches gather together and make a nasty mess. Now with this one, again, check the needle tension from that side. Spot on. That's fine. The loopers, however, are slightly loose. Can you see how they are hanging off the edge of the fabric? Incidentally, if you can see both needle lines, um, there is, let me point with some tweezers, the left needle is the one that holds the threads in place at the edge. The right needle is this one here. So if you can see both needle lines, you are looking at the upper looper. If you can't see both needle lines, then you're looking at the lower looper. So I'm just going to tighten the looper tensions very slightly and then we'll try that again. Now we didn't adjust the needle tension so that is still identical but this time we have improved the looper thread slightly. That could actually go even tighter, but you can see the difference between the two. So I would tighten that very slightly more in order to get a perfect tension. But of course you don't want to tighten it too much when you've got a fabric with stretch because you need some give in that stitch in order to allow the stitches to stretch as much as the fabric does. So always check that you've got a lot of give in your fabric when you're stitching. I'm now going to remove that left needle and show you a three thread overlock. Uh, if you took out the right needle, you'd have a wide three thread, but I'm gonna take out the left needle for a narrow three thread, which three thread isn't really as strong as a four thread overlock, so it's not as good for seams. Uh, you might have noticed I cut the thread after I'd released the needle. That is because if I've cut the thread first and I drop the needle, it's going to fall down into the workings of the machine. However, by leaving the thread in the needle while I remove it and then cutting the thread, if I do drop the needle, it's still swinging on that piece of thread. I'm also going to remove the thread, the needle thread, from that left channel because otherwise, as both needle threads go through the same channel, it will get dragged along with the other one as I'm stitching. So we're down to just the right needle. Um, 
my stitch selector stays on A, my stitch length is on normal, which on this machine is two and a half, my differential feed is on one or N as it says on there. So I'm just going to take some fabric Lower the foot. I've had a few people say to me they feel that this machine is a little noisy. To be honest, for the price that it sells at, I don't think a little bit of extra noise can really be a nuisance when you see it produce such a lovely stitch without having to mess around with tensions. Now to check, I open it out. That is pretty good. It's neither puckering nor gaping. So that needle thread tension is fine. And then if you look at the looper tension, that's absolutely fine too. The snake-like one is the upper looper and the V-shaped one is the lower looper. If you're in doubt as to what you're looking at, the V is for the lower looper, squiggly one, the upper looper. Now the other time I will often use this stitch is as an edging stitch. All I do is to reduce that stitch length to around one and leave everything else the same <clears throat> and I just use it as a hem stitch just gonna see what it looks like before I alter the stitch I could actually tighten the loopers very slightly <clears throat> don't want a hem that is going to be bulky on the bottom of a piece of drape fabric, maybe something like lining fabric and so on, that particularly if you put um, woolly nylon through the loopers, that makes a really lovely hem edge without affecting the drape of your fabric. Now with my overlocker still set at a three thread narrow, I'm going to now change to a rolled hem. So to do that, my stitch selector goes to C. My stitch length goes to around one and a half. And this little slider here goes from N to R. And what that does, let me just take this off to show you, there is a stitch finger in there around which these stitches form, like so. I have now taken the stitch finger out of work and what the machine has done automatically is to tighten the lower looper tension so it's going to fold the fabric over at the edge and give you a good rolled hem. So I've just left it at the normal settings. Let's take a little piece of fabric, foot down and I'm just going to watch it as it comes through and if necessary shorten the stitch length that will vary according to the fabric fabric that wasn't stitch length that was actually differential feed so let's try that again i'm just going down one click at a time until i can see 
a nice stitch appearing. There is your rolled hem. Lovely for edging lightweight fabrics. This is a quilting cotton weight. It is superb on lightweight satins and silks. If you have any problems with the fabric poking through, if you get little pokey bits on your rolled hem, uh, then I strongly recommend that you use something like a woolly nylon in the upper looper only. And that will then, as it takes the tension off of the thread, the thread opens out and covers any little pokey bits and makes the whole thing look lovely and even. I use woolly nylon a great deal for my rolled hems. So basically that was a very quick demonstration of the Lucy. It will also go down to a two thread overlock and I use a two thread for things like a pico stitch, very pretty stitch, um, extremely lightweight for chiffons and uh, organzas and so on. Um, Oh, and I'll also, I'll show you a flat lock as well. So now I'm going to show you a flat lock on this machine. This is a three thread flat lock. So first of all, I'm going to put the stitch finger back into work. So I've put that back to the end setting. The flat lock setting on this pretension machine is F. So I set that to the F. I'm going to put my stitch length to around two, two and a half millimetres. Differential feed stays on N. And now I'm going to put two pieces of stretch fabric together, wrong sides facing. I could, of course, if I wished, put um, some decorative thread through the upper looper because it's the upper looper that's going to show on the right side of the fabric and this is a stitch where you actually want uh, those loops hanging off the edge of the fabric you'll see why in a minute <coughs> there the needle thread is very, very loose, <clears throat> so that allows you to open that out and gives a very lovely flat lock, which is perfect for uh, sportswear, leggings, anything like that, because the inside is completely flat and lovely and soft against your skin. You can, if you wish, use that as the right side. And if you use uh, the left needle instead of the right, you can then weave a fine ribbon through that ladder. <clears throat> 